Dimelang Sanbonani, good day. Today we celebrate yet another woman who is in leadership, making change, and yes, challenging the stereotypes. Her name is Siolise Rangweti. She's the current ATM, Deputy Secretary General of the Women's League. She's been very much active in the party. If you remember, she was part and parcel of the national campaigns during the recent elections. And she says politics is calling to her. She previously served uh, in the finance sector, banking, corporate world. She's right here in studio to touch base on her journey and where she comes from. Siolise Dumela, welcome. Come on stage. How are you? Hi, Bafana. I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm good. I, I look at your profile from finance, politics. I know, give us give us a more of a background. Where are you from and how did the journey start? Okay. Um, so basically I I studied accounting. Mm -hmm. Um I'm from a small town called Beggars Dop in the Eastern Cape. Mm -hmm. So I finished university via a bursary that I got from one of the big banks. Mm -hmm. And then I then continued my career in finance as a management accountant. I've been an analyst. I've been a finance manager. Uh, I've worked for two big banks. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of politics, I mean, I've always been interested in terms of what's going on because it affects our daily lives, basically. Mm -hmm. So I've always taken an interest in terms of wh how the politics or what direction they are taking. Yes. And and basically where I became uh, directly involved is when the ATM was formed. Mm -hmm. um, my church is one of the founding members mm -hmm. of, the, mm -hmm. of the political party. Mm -hmm. So I was already serving in the youth structures, mm -hmm. women uh, structures. So when ATM came, a, it was a, a no-brainer for me that I wanted to be part of it because I'm very interested in changing directly the lives of people. Yes. I'm, I'm very interested in how people live. I'm very interested in being fair to all of us as South Africans because mm -hmm. South Africa belongs to all of us and we should be just and fair in terms of distribution of resources, et cetera. Yes. Mm. I'm so gonna, yes. if, if, if I can just jump into here, um, usually people, when they go into the corporate world, they tend to say, politics are for comrades, you know? I'm okay with my suit and ties and high heels. Um, what inspired that part where you said, I'm going to be part of politics. I'm going to be part of the ground forces. I'm going to work with the people on the ground. Um, I think for me, it, it it has always been deep down. I knew when I was in high school that mm. I wanted to have an impact, mm. you know. Mm. So mm. I studied accounting. I got into finance because mm -hmm. I could say I was good at it. Mm -hmm. But I still had something in me that said, I want to make the difference you know, mm. and for me, being in finance was not enough. Yes. And and for me, then when the opportunity came for me to be directly involved in politics, it mm. was very easy for me because I was already serving at my church, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we had already um, projects where we were giving back to the community, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So for me, just being in finance, I didn't want to be just one dimensional. <laughs> I, 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 I don't think I've ever been a person that thought if you are in finance or in corporate, mm. you have nothing to do with politics, yes. even though that is the the common understanding. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. If I can, if I can say, yeah. Uh, you know, as of recent, uh, for the past couple of years, we have heard of, uh, you know, women empowerment in our country. Women needs to be given spaces. Women needs to be also considered for leadership roles. Uh, your thoughts so far? Have you done well? Hey, you are a woman of in a, in a political party. There are some women that we see in the corporate world. Are we doing good? Or we can do better. So, so definitely, I would say we are doing well. Mm -hmm. um, we are headed the right direction. Mm -hmm. There's still a lot that we need to do. Yes. You know, in terms of empowering and encouraging women to be part of leadership positions, mm -hmm. you know, um, just having 
setting the environment up for women because yeah. women have different challenges mm -hmm. uh, or, or different expectations if you were mm -hmm. to look at society for example i need to be a mother i need to be a wife i need to mm -hmm. do all these things yet i still want to progress in mm -hmm. corporate in politics you know mm -hmm. so we find ourselves having to work very very hard you know yes. we need to do extra mm -hmm to number one be noticed to sure. say mm -hmm. um okay yeah that one looks like and yet all these other <laughs> expectations are, are there you yes, know yes so 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 definitely we need to do better in terms mm -hmm. of setting up the environment but if i were to talk about me myself i have definitely worked very hard to get to where i am mm -hmm. and hard work will always set you up true true but you does know. but did, did it affect you i mean you're a married woman a mother of two yes uh you are in politics you are ready does it any way affect how you take care of your house or were you forced to now hire a maid or get a <laughs> pa <laughs> <laughs> no i'll be honest bafana it does mm, and mm. and i think it does for every woman who is in a senior position yes the the first thing is that you need to acknowledge that you're not going to be everything yes you yes. know and and for me what has worked was my su support structure mm -hmm. my husband understands my vision very well mm -hmm. and and so when when we got married for example i was a career woman mm. it I, I i was working ridiculously long hours mm -hmm. um because i wanted to progress yes, so yes. fortunately he was able to understand that and mm. was able to support me from that perspective mm -hmm. yes i do have a maid <laughs> <laughs> I do have family that assist me when I'm yeah. not around mm -hmm. to help with the kids and everything. Yes, you know? yes. So, yeah. yeah. It, 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 I think, yeah, I think for some people they say, man, I had to get a maid because, <laughs> hey, man, Motona, she's hardly home. She's in the mid, she's on a flight, she's everywhere. And, you know, I think getting a maid is strategic, even though some women are like, hey, yeah, yeah, I don't no, want no, a maid in my house. I would never be able to live without a maid. Like, <laughs> I, like there's so much to do yes you yes know? yeah I, but i'm gonna come to this and the, i loved what you said when you said you're an overachiever you work hard you set your mind into this thing in leadership role and there's been this new thing uh of independent women right and most guys are like hey child those ones they can't be married hey, they're too <laughs> much they're hardly home um you are married what what made it different with you that you are this woman who's educated, who has worked in the corporate world, you're in leadership role, but you still have a stable marriage. How do you, how do you manage that? Um, I think you need to get a partner that understands mm -hmm. your your goals. Sure. That's the first thing. And you need to be very clear going into the relationship to say this is what I'm looking to do, mm -hmm. you know, and and it takes a lot of uh, teamwork to mm -hmm. do all of these things you yes, know yes. there's compromises that you will make you mm -hmm. know but also from the other side you would expect mm -hmm. um compromises as well so yes. i think for me what has worked was the right person and the person who understood mm -hmm. my <laughs> drive <laughs> if i can put it that way okay yeah so wh wh where do you think most independent women get it wrong uh like yourself why most of them what do you think what do you think they get it wrong because usually it seems to be like i have money i have my own house my own car um i don't need a man <laughs> <laughs> well it's it's a bit difficult to speak from that perspective right yes. because um so I, I have had to navigate as well. Okay. So the first thing, I was raised by a single woman, right? Mm -hmm. So I know women can do it for themselves. Sure. You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I have that within me. Independent. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. But now, I think when the relationship, when you communicate such things, when you understand each other's backgrounds, it becomes easier to say, because for me, it was very hard to let go and say, no, my husband can take care of me, mm, you know, mm, because mm, I'm mm. like, you, you, you do it yourself. Yes. <laughs> but I, I think it took a lot of conversation and mm -hmm. understanding and just 
the different compromises that we come with. Mm. For mm. example, you ne you need to have boundaries to say, no, this I have to do myself. It mm. doesn't mean I'm not a submissive woman. Mm -hmm. And submission means different things to different people. Mm -hmm. So if your partner understands what submission is mm -hmm. and is happy with that, mm -hmm. then I, I think... I have a follow-up question. What is submission? <laughs> Sorry, I I because said it means different things. I I have an idea that submission is more of you allow your man to lead, mm. you allow your man to guide, uh, you you trust his vision for yeah. both of you. Mm. Uh, what would be submission for you? So so definitely the first things that you've said mm -hmm. to lead um, to to have a vision for the both of us, but yes. I need to be part of that vision. Yes. You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like there's decisions that I'm okay with him making, but mm -hmm. decisions that I'm not okay with him making alone. Yes, yes, You know when yes. they say the woman is the neck? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. the head cannot move without the neck. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I, I sort of lead at my own... Mm -hmm. uh, level, if yes, I can yes, put it that yes. way. Mm -hmm. Yes. So mm -hmm. I am a leader in my own right, mm -hmm. you know, but at home, I understand that he is the leader of our family. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. when I get out of our home, I need to be a leader mm -hmm. in my team, in corporate. Yes. I need to be a leader in the politics. Yes. Um, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it uh, submission doesn't mean I need to say yeah, bo, baba, for everything, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but um, I, I, I also think it comes with, because they say the woman, the woman needs to submit and the man needs to love and protect and everything. Mm -hmm. When you are loved and protected the right way, mm -hmm. submission comes Mm. automatically yes 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 i mean I, I love the way you say things eh? it's a part <laughs> where you say when you are loved the right way when you when you're which is i think that's the truth uh, i think lately the idea of love and relationships mm. um i'm worried as a man uh for the future of even our boys and our girls yes to say there has been a different approach where relationships don't last anymore, mm. marriages don't last anymore. Yeah, kids, uh, these kids find themselves not even kids, these ladies and girls and boys, they find themselves in relationships where, where there's gender based violence, mm. where there's mental health issues, where there's drug abuse. And the question then becomes to say, w most people would say, like I remember a couple of years ago, my grandfather, when my grandfather said, you know, back in the day, we used to get married by the age of 30. You already, yeah. I already had a family and wife. No, not at least about 30, you are still, <laughs> a little clever, most of thing, yes. you know? And I said, it's a different time and age. Uh, it's a different time and age whereby you have different kind of men, you have different kind of women. Mm. But then are, are you worried about the, 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 the longer king, the future of family in South Africa. What is your view on the future of families in South Africa? Do you think we are we are experiencing a, a decline? Mm. Um, yeah. So, so that's a that's a tough topic mm -hmm. uh, to be honest. Because I, I'll start it by saying, because you have a change now in the dynamic, mm. because women are looking to grow and become leaders. Mm -hmm. So then that means. Uh, they are not the naturals that they used to be or caregivers, primary caregivers that yes. used to be because now they need to be at work. They need to go longer mm -hmm. hours. But I think um, we need to move with the... The age. The age, mm -hmm. yes. We need to move with the age in such a way that as much as 20 years ago, the woman used to be 80% at home. Mm, mm, now mm. I feel the father now needs to give some percentage back to say, let's meet each other halfway so that we still instill the family values mm. that we we want with yes. our children. Mm -hmm. And I do think that maybe part of it is to say, I am busy uh, progressing mm -hmm. with my career and we are not really looking at how the kids, uh, we are just looking at the financial, are they financially okay? Mm -hmm. Do they go to school? And we, we're not necessarily instilling or those grooming. values or mm. grooming, mm. you know? Mm. Mm. So mm. I do think we need to spend a lot of time doing mm. that. Yes. And in saying that, I do think that 
you know, the girl child. For example, my daughter will look up to me and say, I want to be like my mom, mm, you know. Mm, mm. We need to also make sure that the boy child is also groomed accordingly mm, so mm. that in future you avoid the, the mm. issues of feeling inferior from yes. the male side, which mm. can also lead to gender-based violence because... Yes. This woman is so powerful. I can't deal with this, you know. Mm, mm, so mm. there's a lot of work that we need to do from a family value perspective. And yes. I think how we need to do it is to say, let the the fathers also play mm -hmm. the, the role. So sort of meet In each other halfway. halfway. <clears throat> because yes. I, I won't lie, I've been to many homes uh, where kids are playing on a tablet or they just stuck in their room with a PlayStation. Yeah. And whenever they cry with your phone, you know, yes. you, you know the child is in the house once the phone goes off. Yes. Mom, like, hey, we're going to one again, they won't right? And my worry has always been that uh, because you have relegated that, the delegated that mm. uh, responsibility to, mm. to technology. And understand, we are working hard. People, you know, work long hours. Uh, mothers and fathers are working, and now the kid has to in a way you know you they're in charge of their upbringing all you gotta do is give them money buy them iphones let them look nice yeah. but in terms of do you understand how they think do you understand their struggles do you know what kind of friends they have do you know what kind of fights they are into mm -hmm. and i think that that neglection sometimes it becomes a time ticking bomb because mm -hmm. at the time when you are 20 or 19 is the only then now you want to tell him hey you don't do that but he started back there when she was six or five, and he didn't even see it coming because he's like, I, I'm giving her money. Mm. She must be grateful and enjoy life and listen to me as a father. But here's the other problem that I've seen. Mental health, mental health issues amongst women, that drives them to alcohol abuse. That drives them to all of these things that have come, you know, as of recent. Do we need to have maybe social workers uh, in clinics, should we provide free counseling? Because there's a scourge right now of a lot of women jumping into drug abuse, alcohol abuse, even some are even smoking weed lately. Mm. Uh, so it becomes an issue of do we need to provide them with emotional support or therapeutic or psychiatric support? Mm. Yes, so so definitely we do need the support. Mm. Hence, I, I think when we started, I did say, we need to make the environment conducive for them mm. because the truth is it's a lot of new pressure, mm -hmm. you know, and you would always, I, I've mentioned this before, you would always need to feel like you need to do more because mm -hmm. you are co competing with people who have traditionally been, been doing this, mm -hmm. been mm -hmm. in a leadership. Now you're navigating being in a leadership. There's a lot of factors that come to it. You have to put in extra hours. You have imposter syndrome. That thing mm. of, I'm a leader now. Am I? Am I really? <laughs> and then, you know, yeah. then you have to. It's a lot of pressure. Yes. So, so I, th I definitely think there should be counseling mm -hmm. uh, made available for women leaders. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I remember in the previous bank that I w was at, there's something called ICAS. So it's like mm -hmm. you can call them at any time, schedule them a, a counseling session, talk about anything. That's mm. part of the support okay. that, that, that you need. It's very crucial. Mm. And also, I think having a um, support system from the environment that you are in. For mm -hmm. example, if you are a leader in corporate, if you mm. have maybe a mentor, mm -hmm. Other than your manager, yes, your manager is also your mentor. But like if you have a mentor that is higher up, who mm -hmm. can help you navigate? It also helps if it's a woman because they are facing most of the uh, challenges yes. that they or they have faced, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. So it helps to have that. I will always go back to the support structure yes. from a perspective of I have a mentor but also the environment is conducive enough for me to say, I am feeling it now. I need to call ICAS. I need to schedule a therapy mm -hmm. session so that I come back and I'm a better person. True, you know? true. 
And and also that will also assist you to say when you need a break, because you can't function like this like yeah. all the time. I, I try, I try. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but you're gonna <laughs> break. Mm, 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 you know, mm, mm. you you do need to take the breaks yes. and get things that fill you up. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like if you are a person who thinks, you know, I'm feeling anxious. What I normally do when I'm feeling anxious, I take a walk. Wow. Okay. Or I go and I spend time with my kids. Mm -hmm. That fills my cup. Yes. You know, yes, yes. then I come back and I'm better, you know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. self-awareness is also a big thing as well to say, now I can feel that I'm going to break. I need to take, and take a, a minute and, you know, mm, yeah, mm, so mm. it's very, very important. No, definitely. I'm going to come to this part. Uh, teenage pregnancy that we've been seen, seen in schools, in communities. We have seen also this thing of older guy, older men dating school girls or even, even college students, yeah. right? Uh, they even gave it a, a good name, ladies. They call Blessers. it Slay Queens and Bless Us. They call them Bless Us, mm. and girls are called Slay Queens. How did we arrive here? Is it poverty? Is it uh, maybe upbringing? Uh, how did we arrive here from your perspective? So I definitely think poverty had a lot of uh, role to play mm -hmm. because... For example, if you, let's take the university example. If you're in university and you come from a family that has nothing, mm -hmm. right? And number one, you need to progress. Let's say you don't have a basar. Yes. And you are like, I need to progress with my studies. Mm -hmm. I need to pay rent. I mm, need mm, to mm. eat. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's this thing available <laughs> to say, mm -hmm. no, you just need to do it for like... Once One in a night, while. Mm -hmm. you get your allowance, you know. Ish, yeah. What are the other options? What other options are there for mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. child, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So poverty has a lot to do. That's why I think government needs to do a lot when it comes to tertiary education and free education. Mm -hmm. Because then you won't find our girls put in such awkward positions to true, have to true. sell themselves because mm. that's essentially selling yourself yeah you know because mm -hmm. i've yeah. seen that and even though they have nice ways to kind of frame them but i tend to feel like but guys it's, it's it doesn't feel right uh or doesn't look right that a girl will be dating a 45 year old man and she's like on her 20s just studying varsity mm -hmm. only for the sake of money only for the sake of access mm -hmm. and uh, it, it breaks my heart but i remember there was a time where ATM, I think you still stand by that, where you wanted to introduce a military training mm. uh, for for young people to build discipline. Mm. Because also I feel sometimes it's not even an issue of poverty, sometimes it's an issue of discipline and values, the principles, mm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, do, you, do you still follow by that? Do you think maybe taking them to the, to the military after high school we will be able to build better, focus the young people? Mm. So, so definitely not everyone. Mm -hmm. But but we do believe that we should invest on our military um, mm -hmm. capital yes. because we don't really see them much now. Mm -hmm. You only saw them when there was COVID taking yes. place. Yes. For example, there's a lot of crime taking place in the um, locations. Mm -hmm. Where are those uh, soldiers? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so not necessarily for just discipline. Because mm -hmm. you can't discipline everyone the same. Yes, yes. You know, mm -hmm. but definitely if you do um, invest on the military, then you're giving those people a discipline, education, mm -hmm. and a chance in life. You yes, know, you're taking yes. them away from the streets. Um, mm. But basically, there's there's a... It's, it's a whole value chain that we need to look at, yes. you know. Um, you go back to the family values to say, mm -hmm. if they were instilled enough, would these children be finding mm -hmm. themselves in a place where they are forced to, <laughs> mm -hmm. or feel like they are forced because no one is ever forced. Yes, but yes. if at home I was taught to say, this is never an option, mm. you know. Mm. So there is family values to it, mm. Uh, mm. yes. Yeah. I mean, you are right to say, I think it's when you, somebody said, is it, maybe it's the, this scourge of single parenting that we have. 
I mean, now you have baby daddies, baby mamas. I think it's more prevalent now than a couple of years ago. Mm. Uh, but we have seen, somebody even made a joke about it to say relationship is only for two people. Once the third person <laughs> comes in, it breaks apart, right? <laughs> Once the child comes in, <laughs> yes. and it, it worries me because we are not really reversing uh, the the pains of the past, but we are literally now going, we are just going ahead or maybe making it worse than it mm. was before. Do you think maybe this has something to do with the history of the black nation as a people, that we were raised by a broken people, we became a broken nation, and we are also going to end up raising broken people? Do you think maybe there must be some sort of a healing project mm -hmm. taking place uh, to kind of re rebuild and build uh, what called moral regeneration? Yeah, as you were talking, I was thinking moral regeneration, mm, mm. which is one of the things that ATM really, really mm. uh, wants to put forward. Mm -hmm. um, because rightfully so, we've been broken in so many instances. Sure. And even in the 30 years of democracy that mm -hmm. we've had, mm -hmm. I mean, we, 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 as a lot of us have been disappointed by the system, True. you know. True. So we need to do a lot of work in mm -hmm. terms of the moral regeneration, mm -hmm. building back Ubuntu into people. Because yes. um, I think having a conscience mm -hmm. helps a lot when yes. it comes to decision making. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it will be very difficult for me to, let's say, um, go and impregnate a, a, a girlfriend and just leave them. Mm, if mm, I have mm, a conscience, mm. yes, you know. Yes. So now uh, it goes back to the moral regeneration that we really, really need to invest on as a country. Mm -hmm. But we have a lot to do in terms of making sure that bread and butter issues are sorted. Mm, because mm. if I'm hungry, the last thing I want to think about mm. is that I'm, I need to be a dignified man because <laughs> yes, I'm hungry. Yes. How am I even dignified when I don't mm, have anything to mm, eat? Mm. I mean, how am I going to take care of that girlfriend and that child mm. if I have no job. Yes, yes. You get what I mean. Mm, so mm, mm. it's a it's a value chain of things, mm. but we need to take care of the bread, main and, butter. bread and butter issues first. There's no dignity in poverty, as they exactly. said. Exactly. Mm, mm. I'm going to go, because you are a religious party, one had to say, and religion used to play quite a, a strong role. Uh, because people used to think, God, what would, what would God think about my actions? And mm. I think um, most as of recent, we are slowly but surely pushing religion away and everybody does as they want. And I'm not sure whether that is the right approach to go because in terms of when we had biblical values, when, he, when we had the fear of God, mm. we had better communities we had we treated each other better because with an idea that we are saving God and in return saving humanity. Yeah. But then with the current state of affairs right now in South Africa, do you still believe the church has a role to play or do you think uh, their time is up? <laughs> so their time is definitely not up in mm -hmm. my view. Yes. Um, I do believe that. So as I'll, I'll talk about the black person specifically. Mm. So we grew up uh, with a, pa a higher power in mind. Back mm. then, they used to say kamata and whatever. Veli <laughs> Yes. Yes. So, so we've always <laughs> been <laughs> that <laughs> nation, mm -hmm. you know, and and it it gave us the thinking to say, if I'm doing this, how is God gonna view me? Mm, I, I'm mm. disappointing God and all of that. So religion has a lot mm. um, to do with who we've been as a people. Mm -hmm. And and that then brings in the churches. I mean, there's other faiths as well, mm. which I think has a huge role to play. Mm -hmm. And I do think they continue to. Mm -hmm. But let our government also be inclusive because I don't think they have that much appetite mm, in terms mm, of mm. the role that the church, ch churches or religion mm. can play into making our society better. That's yes. I think as a young person, uh, I've had engaged and I'm, 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 I'm a Christian and I work a lot within the churches. 
And what I have seen, there is a good number of young people coming and saving and, you know, passionate about God and everything. Mm. Um, but there was also a large majority as well that sees God as either the religion of the, who sees the Bible as the colonizer's book, mm. who sees religion as the, the something of the past. Uh, that the, even traditionally, as my Africa, we would have a mm. and there would be certain things, like, mm. where you had a certain... Uh, laws and codes and code of conduct in yeah. Ubuntu that mm. we lived by, but they are slowly being reduced to being those are outdated, those are stuff of the old people. Mm. And uh, my question then sometimes worries me to say, as we want to build communities, as we want to build stronger women, and as we want to build stronger men, why is it that there is this, how did we arrive to a point where God is controversial, mm. where morality is controversial, where I tell you something is wrong, already you jump to, don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so back to my point of saying, I, I do think to a certain extent, our laws or policies that are governing South Africa have not really embraced Mm -hmm. the role that is played by the religious fraternity. Yes. And that also includes the royal fraternity, by mm. the way, mm. because, for example, in the Eastern Cape, there are places where a king is in charge of their village, mm -hmm. if I can put it that way. And discipline is instilled or was instilled back in the day mm -hmm. by the king. You didn't have to take the child to the police. Mm. If they had mm. seen... There's a like a community. Yes, uh, there is that cluster. Yes, that a, will a discipline, discipline them. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yes. So I do think governance and our government needs to put these parties into the running of the country mm -hmm. because they bring back that conscious. Con con conscious. Okay. Yes. 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 <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> yes. They. 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 They are. They play a, a pivotal role in mm -hmm. terms of... So now, when, when a government is like, ah, it's up to you, we don't Do need a please. view from the churches, we don't need a view from Amakosi, mm. then kids are bound to just be like, don't judge me, it's my life, it's just kind like, of thing. It's more like you're on autopilot. You exactly. Just, you just move as you go. There's no campus. One thing we have seen, uh, my sister, gender-based violence. Mm. Some say it needs to be stopped. Women need to be empowered. Maybe be given self-defense courses. Some say some women use this gender-based violence either to trap men, to abuse men. And the question then becomes, what is at the core of this? Is it anger? Is it unhealed wounds? Is it, what would you say from your perspective as a woman? Because usually people would be dating for 10 years. Then jiggy jiggy tabo to in some side, like ah, my chief no ratam side yao. Or it can be other way, you know. A woman was in twenty years marriage, and within twenty years, the woman stabbed a man to death. And yes, it's gender based violence, but we are not speaking about the roots of it. And that's what I'm concerned about. What do you think might be the roots of this scourge in our nation? Yeah. So I I think one of the things that I have um seen is that in most of those cases um you would see a happy couple mm. most of the time right mm -hmm. and you would not know about what is going on behind closed doors mm. so for me that speaks to the sense of society yes. to say do i even have someone to talk to mm. because it mm. wouldn't have to get to that extreme way i feel like the only way is to shoot my wife for doing that, mm -hmm. you know? Yes, there's un a lot of unhealed issues. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of, I, I spoke about it now, of uh, now women are emerging to be leaders. Mm -hmm. That also plays a role to say, now Musadi O has some bonaganics because mm. they are a leader. We yes, were, yes. You know? Mm -hmm. But I, I, I do think a sense of, community would assist us a lot mm -hmm. when I know it's safe for me to talk to my neighbor who is my brother. Yes. Or yes. my sister who is uh, my front mm -hmm. opposite yes, neighbor, yes. you know. Mm -hmm. 
because a lot of that can be solved by just talking. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now when someone feels like it's like depression when when someone feels like I can't talk to anyone and, and they I'm, end up I'm killing all alone. themselves. Yes, yes, yes you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yes, there's a lot of past traumas that we we we've encountered mm -hmm. and and I do think also the family life the the change in that Dy dynamics, I mm -hmm. think I've mentioned this as well. Yes. Have have not been embraced the way they should. Like no one has told the men how to deal with a woman that has now more opportunities mm, 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 than mm. him when yes. he previously was the caregiver or the mm -hmm. the breadwinner. Yes. You know? Yes. So all of those uh, have um, an impact. It becomes a power struggle now. Power struggle. To say who is in charge, right? Exactly. Um, she's making more money than me or she's, yes. she's busy. Uh, she does this more than me. She's hardly home. Mm. Uh, but then isn't, does it does it cut to faithfulness in the relationships? Because what I hear a lot, it's either the wife cheated and the wife got angry yeah. and <laughs> say, mm. and it goes to even to, to men where I'm sorry, a woman has left the men uh, for another man, is yeah. it is it also the issue of uh, faithfulness and loyalty in relationships? Mm. Uh, so I like taking another angle mm -hmm. about thinking about things or talking about things. So so you also have. So I spoke about the gender mm -hmm. equality yes. one, but then you also have a dynamic now where, let's say husband hasn't been working for a long time mm -hmm. and the woman has seen that because naturally the husband has to be the caregiver, has to be the provider. Now he's not able to do that. And the wife sees somewhere else, Bible. someone here is able to can take do care. this, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. It also then goes back to where we are economy-wise. Mm. What is our government doing to make sure that there's job creation instead of giving me 350 because I'm unemployed? Can yes. you give me a job so that I can be able to be a provider in my home? Yeah. You know, so mm. there's a lot of dynamic that mm -hmm. that comes in yes. with that. And it will like the the byproducts of it will be there will be cheating. Mm. There will be someone finding something better elsewhere mm -hmm. i'm not saying that wouldn't be the case but money if, money is money is the engine especially when there's poverty mm -hmm. at hand mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. there's there's the thing of being greedy to say i i'm already taken care of i just want more i'm greedy mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. then there's the thing of my kids are going to bed hungry mm -hmm. i need to mm -hmm. go girls up Yes, yes. Certainly. You get. Mm, certainly. Yeah. I get you. I get you. Because I think the, the case that you have seen a lot, mm. which one of them was one of the two radio broadcasters, I won't mention their names, yeah. where a woman at some point accused them of rape. And uh, she also alleged to say there was GBV aligned to it, mm. um, which to some extent... Most people now, when somebody says GBV, they, they end up going like, oh, wait a minute, we want to hear the whole story. So yes. slowly but surely, this struggle for women, it is slowly now being abused or either being um, <clears throat> what's the word? reduced in a way mm. to say, because before when a woman said GBV, we, be we believe you, we jump. Mm. Now it's an issue of what happened. Or how is did it, it happen? Really? Mm. Is it really happened? Are you trying to get something out of it? And there's something also whereby most men today are in jail because of rape uh, allegations that uh, maybe a woman wanted money, like that thing of Pitori. I don't know if it's, it's happening across the country. What do, call it? what do they call it? Mavoso. Mav mm. Mavoso. Yeah, yes, I yes. think it's Mavoso, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. And most guys say is like you pick up a girl in a club and tomorrow morning, what are 2.5? 2 like 2,500 rent. I'm like, oh, I don't have that money. Like, okay, it's either you pay me or I'm reporting mm. rape. And to those women who may be doing such things, what is your view? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a sad mm -hmm. situation to see, you know. Mm. But now I'm gonna sound like a broken record. Go for it. Let the government give people a chance to make a living for themselves so okay. that we don't have to find people 
in situations where they go and look for work in something in called directly. mavuso. Mm, 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 because mm, at the end mm. of the day, if you follow most, I would say, mm -hmm. most of the stories of these children, I don't think they woke up one day and were like, I'm, I'm going to go this. sell myself. I'm mm -hmm. going to get 2.5 from sleeping with mm -hmm. a man. I, I don't think any girl grows up and says, I want to be yeah, that, yeah. True. you know. True. So let the government do right by mm -hmm. the people. Yes. Children need to be given a chance to go to school mm -hmm. and people need to be given a chance to go and work. Mm -hmm. and make an honest living for themselves. Yes. So that's my view. I can't judge those girls that go and get Mavuso because mm -hmm. perhaps it's the only way they can, they see There's gonna be of another making way, money. Though, but yeah, I hear you. I hear you. you um, know? I hear you. I mean, this, I feel that there's gonna be another way, but yeah. I, I, I hear what you're saying. Some, some, some of them, they're put in the corner. But in the current, like, look at the current situation in South Africa. Mm. Mm, Where, mm. like, it's very sad. Where you have 60% Where... of the youth are unemployed. Exactly. And most of them are young boys and young men. And even older generations that are unemployed. Mm. And women are the ones who are the caregivers. And sadly, most women want a man who is financially stable. So you end up now having those guys competing. <laughs> or can't, can't even get a girlfriend because she has not, uh, he doesn't have the enough funds mm. to take her to McDonald's or anything. Yeah. But my sister, I'm going to, before I just let you go, Yeah. Uh, you are in leadership in, the, in, in ATM. You have been in leadership in the corporate world. The, the, the question would be, women in leadership, what would you say still needs to be done? to ensure that hopefully one day we would be have a woman president in this country. Mm. So so I think generally I think women have done very very well in mm. in the leadership positions, you know. Mm -hmm. Um I I do think from a woman's perspective mm. I think we need to believe in ourselves enough. Yes. That's where it starts to mm -hmm. say I can't do this. Yes. Number two, go get the training that mm -hmm. you need mm -hmm. to get ahead. Number three, be willing to stay the course or have the, what do you call this? The courage. No, it, Landoyo. Teta, the teta is Ted. Uh, you need to be able to, what is it? To, be, to endure. Endure, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Because growth is not comfortable. Yes. You need to be able to, uh, mm -hmm withstand the yes. difficult times mm -hmm. and stay the course just because it gets difficult doesn't mean uh, it's impossible it's impossible mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and you need to take up the space because the space is there mm -hmm. right but it won't be given to you just like this mm -hmm. so you need mm -hmm. to push a little bit gonna, just gonna. push a little bit mm -hmm. and be like i'm here i'm here mm -hmm. unfortunately that's what we have to do as women to be noticed you can't mm. be sitting in your corner and waiting for people to notice you. Yes. You yes. Know? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I do think that from a corporate perspective, we've gone a long way mm -hmm. in terms of ensuring that we groom women leaders. Yes. But we have a long way to go. Because if you look at the statistics from um, a board member's perspective, we're sitting at about 35%, yet mm -hmm. we have 41% women mm -hmm. uh, in corporate. Yes. So it tells you that there's still something that we need to do. Mm -hmm. And for me, it will go back to creating the conducive environment because we're trying to make something that hasn't been there before. Mm -hmm. So we need mm -hmm. to make the environment conducive mm -hmm. as government institutions as well mm -hmm. to make mm -hmm. sure that we are setting our women up. So... You know, when you look at this, the current elections, uh, the recent ones uh, that we had, uh, we had uh, some women uh, going into leadership positions, and one asked the question, how far are we from actually having a woman president in South Africa? How many elections are we from until we have a woman president in the, in, uh, in, in the union buildings commanding the forces of this country? So coming from a woman... Mm -hmm. We are ready. Mm. Uh, I love it. 
the next uh, elections, mm. we are actually ready to to have a woman president. Mm. I, I'm a firm believer in women, no, in leadership without gender. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I do believe we have a lot of capable women that mm. can be mm. able to carry out that position. Mm-hmm. I mean, 30 years was more than enough for us yes. to say we are ready for a woman president. Mm-hmm. We have had women like Winnie, Mand- Winnie Mandela. We have had women like Helen Sussman. We have had women like uh, Ruth First and many others who were central and played key roles uh, during the struggle and even towards what we have today as democratic South Africa. Do you feel that we appreciate these women enough as a nation? Um, I think we do. Mm-hmm. I think we do. Uh, I think there's a lot of learnings that we do. I mean, in the different corners that I, I am in, mm-hmm. I mean, the women leagues that mm-hmm. I've been exposed to, they take a lot of lessons from, they always refer to them mm-hmm. as the strong women who have played a huge role in terms of making sure that we as women are where we are. Mm-hmm. So I do think we we do take mm-hmm. the, we've, we do appreciate them mm-hmm. uh, a lot and we take forward all the things that they have done and we try and build from that and mm-hmm. do more. Hence, I was saying, I do think we are ready for a, a, a woman president. Hi, Womanda, is yes. going to say, Womanda. My sister, I'm going to let you go, but before I let you go, I will give you a two minutes. Uh, the camera is right there be, on your eyes. And then just speak to women. Is your month, what is your message of inspiration to them, or motivation, or whatever's on your mind, on your heart? There you go. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you very much. So I think women, as I've said before, we need to believe a lot mm-hmm. on ourselves. Mm-hmm. We've got a lot to offer and we've got a lot of the interpersonal skills that are needed in our country, in corporate, to actually make sure that those organizations go further. So we need to believe in ourselves, um, develop yourself, um, go through the motions and make sure that you you develop and learn as much as you can so that you can set yourself up. Um, take up the space. I've, also, I've already said that. Take up the space. It's there for us to take. Um, if you need to push a little, do that, but do it in a womanly way. You don't have to change who you are. You don't have to be masculine to actually be a leader. Um, yeah, I think women are very capable of doing everything that mm-hmm. they put their hand or, or their minds minds onto. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, yes, that's Sioli Rangweti, ATM Deputy Secretary, Deputy Secretary General of the ATM's Women's League, and she said it better. You can do it. You can rise up. The space is open. And to all the women out there, we still celebrate you. Happy Women's Month. See you next time as we celebrate another woman doing great things for South Africa in leadership, changing lives. Other than that, this was proudly brought to you by Podcast Party, where great minds don't think...